Hey everyone, it's Ross. In today's video, we're going to talk about seeds and starting them indoors. We've already done a couple of videos on starting seeds. This one uh, was the one we did on snap peas, and we had started snap peas early on this section here. We put in two different snap peas in each different hole, and we're going to actually transplant them out that way and keep them as two plants per hole. Um, you can do the same thing with a whole bunch of other plants. You can kind of multi-sow them is what Charles Dowding calls them, calls this method, I should say, in England. You can multi-sow spinach, arugula, parsley, turnips, radishes, beets, leeks, onions. We've already done the same thing, actually, with the, with the onions up here. Sorry if you guys heard some weird noise just now. But the, uh, the onions are the same way. We multi-sow them so that in the same hole, we have about four or five different onions in the same hole. They won't become the biggest onions, right? But they'll certainly get some nice size. And it's a really great way to use a lot of the space that you have. And that's something that market gardeners really uh, thrive at, and that's some of their strong suits. This whole situation here, though, just to go over what this even is trying to accomplish, is that we have this tray it's 128 cells, one inch by one inch. It's about two inches deep. And we're starting a whole bunch of seeds in here about a month before we're gonna transplant a lot of these plants out. We have them in the grow closet along with the figs because we're trying to germinate these. We have the perfect temperature in here, about 79, 80 degrees or so. It gets down to 72 at the low in this closet when the lights go off uh, at nighttime. So we're getting good temperatures here to get germination. Once all this stuff in here germinates, we're gonna, tr we're gonna move this to the sunroom. And in the sunroom, we're gonna have access to all kinds of actual light rather than artificial light. And it's just gonna be better for these plants to not get too leggy. Um, and they're gonna sit there for about a month Hopefully they can adjust more easily to outdoor conditions that way because they're in the sunroom, which is actually south facing. So when we transplant them out, hopefully we won't have a big issue. Now we're doing the same thing, but in this little container here, in this cell tray, we are not going to multi-sow. We're gonna be doing things like Swiss chard, broccoli, mizuna, rapini, Suho and Ryuko and Kailan are all different types of Chinese broccoli. We've also got another type of uh, rapini here called Happy Rich, which is like another word for broccoli rob. And then we also have Brussels sprouts here. And we're going to be doing this whole section here as well, but with other plants and other varieties that I've I've mentioned in the past, but. The majority of it is gonna be these Asian greens here. And I really am a big fan of Asian vegetables nowadays because they do so well in my climate. It mimics my climate uh, pretty well. So those warm summers that we have, a lot of this stuff is not gonna bolt. Um, so it's really, I'm trying to focus on things other than the broccoli and the, and the, uh, the Brussels sprouts. I'm really trying to focus on things that won't bolt things that will do well here even in the warmth of our summer and the whole reason I'm even doing broccoli and Brussels sprouts I said I would never do them again is because we're doing them in these trays we're giving them a month's head start we're putting them in the sunroom and then in the sunroom they'll sit there for about three weeks and about a month from now because today is February 15th on March 15th we'll transplant all this stuff out the temperatures at that time are probably somewhere, they're not gonna dip below 20, but if they do get to 20, 20 degrees Fahrenheit, we can put a row cover over the, uh, the soil and really protect these plants from potential frost or potential cold. And that'll really help keep things warm. So in today's video, I'm actually gonna set you guys down and we're gonna focus on me talking to you guys while I direct seed this stuff, or while I seed this stuff in here. And that's pretty much gonna be the video. Um, so let's get started here. And I guess we can start off with 
some broccoli. We already did the Swiss chard. Um, I want to try two different varieties of Swiss chard this year. We have one here that is my absolute favorite. It's probably the best Swiss chard. Well, just in general, Swiss chard is incredible here. But this one's called Verde de Taglio. It's an Italian variety from Baker Creek. Really impressed with this variety. Um, it's my longest lived vegetable in the garden. And I can direct seed it sometime between... Uh, let's see, we can direct seed it probably, you know, March 15th, like I'm going to right now. And then we can also, it can, it'll live till at least the end of December. Um, or in some cases, maybe not to the end of December, but it will live probably into December. So that's pretty impressive. And I'm, I'm uh, thoroughly impressed with the variety. Right now I'm putting about four seeds per hole. Um, that's about as much as you want to go. I mean, you don't really need to go that much, right? I think some keys to this before we really get into me just showing you how all this works, I guess. Even though I'm sure a lot of you guys are really good at gardening and you don't really need me to teach you this, guys. But, you know, for those of you who don't, what we've done is we put in soil in these trays that is really moist. Um, it's the appropriate moisture level. We're using a well-draining soil that has lots of airflow in it, uh, but also something that holds moisture. This is half compost, half pine bark mulch. And in the, uh, in the soil, again, the right moisture, but we've also packed the soil down into each cell really well. And the whole reason you do that is because when you take these little cells out of the tray and transplant them in the ground, um, you don't want them to break up. So the, by packing them down really tight, we're getting um, a really solid mass of soil that's not gonna break up as easily as something that uh, isn't packed in there very tightly. Also, you get more soil in there, more nutrients, holds better water. Um, you know, there's a whole number of really great uh, reasons to do this. So we just did the Brussels sprouts and the broccoli, and we've made holes with our dibbler here. This is a pencil. And we just made a hole in all of these already. Put the seed in the hole. Um, you don't want to go too deep, but you also don't want to go too shallow. Because if you go too shallow, me in the closet here is so dry that the so the top like really the top like half an inch, quarter inch dries out real quickly. So I need to make sure that the the top of the soil is staying very moist if I'm gonna if I'm gonna seed this stuff very shallow. What we're gonna do at the end here, as you saw up above in the closet, is that we're gonna take the uh, plastic wrap here and we're gonna put the plastic wrap over top of this to create a humidity dome. But this here, we're doing Happy Rich. Here's Happy Rich down here. Happy Rich is supposed to be a broccoli that's very similar to broccoli rabe or rapini, but it's a hybrid and it's supposed to perform better. And I don't really know if that's true. I tried broccoli rob and rapini last year, or and, and um, happy rich, and I didn't get a single crop off of them. It was very disappointing. Um, I was very tempted to just never grow these again, but because we're getting this early start, and maybe I just didn't prune them correctly, we're gonna try again. So, you know, if you fail, guys, don't be afraid to try again. But anyway, we're just doing the same thing. Um, and if you want to know, uh, you know what I just did? I just put some rapini seeds where the happy rich was. So <laughs> we're going to have a lot of seed come up in that location, in that, in that cell. No big deal. 
man, I can't get this thing open. But I think what I want to mention here is uh, is spacing. Um, we talked a lot about what I'm going to grow in prior videos. We talked about my garden plans. We talked about mapping all that out. We talked about the varieties that I'm going to select and why I'm growing them. You know, all that's really, really important. Um, but we never really mentioned spacing, so maybe we'll do that more in depth when the time comes when I plant these things. But I think, for the most part, it's very simple. Um, the majority of this stuff here is going to get one plant per square foot. So all the Kailan, the rapini, the broccoli, the Brussels sprouts, all that gets to really large sizes. Um, except for maybe the rapini and the Kailan, is that you can kind of space them a little bit closer. Like if you look here on the back, um, Actually, this one says you want to thin this one three to four inches apart, which is pretty interesting. Um, so maybe I should even go closer with this stuff. Let's see what this one says. This one says six to eight. I think eight inches is probably what you want for this. Rapini here, it says, it doesn't say. But, Maybe the uh, Happy Rich says. I'm sure Happy Rich will say something here about it. Because Johnny's is really good about helping people out, I think, in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of people who are farmers. Yeah, this and th these are different kind of like, almost maybe even different species. So you can't really say the same thing for all of them. Um, yeah, okay, this one says four to six inches apart. So I think six inches is probably our number. And I may even, because six inches is our number here, I may want to plant more of them. So I may want to come back in here after this video is over and do more of them. I've got basically squ uh, three square feet for the Rapini and the Happy Rich, which is, I have eight plants here. Um, if they're six inches apart, I can certainly get away with probably a, probably 12 plants total at a minimum, maybe even maybe even 16. So I may end up doing another row of them. And the same thing with the Suho, Ryoko, and Kailan, the different types of Kailan. So did we do Suho yet? We did not. So let's get on this. Don't you just hate a packet that doesn't open like that? And then you've got to come in here and somehow get this thing open. Man. I'm not even sure I can just get in here. Unless I, I have to rip it. Well, it's not the end of the world. This one's Ryoko. Anyway, I hope I have much more success this year with my brassicas because last year was a pretty good disappointment. And I ended up getting white fly um, about halfway through the season. It wiped out a lot of the brassicas, a lot of the cool oven crops. I mean, you know, they're not really supposed to grow at that time anyway, but um, I really want to find things that are more resistant to this kind of stuff. So that's really what I've taken um, in stride this year, is that I, I wanted to find things that were bolt resistant um, from Japan, from China, that kind of have adapted really well to a hot and humid summer. You know, that's really the goal here. So I can't really do anything more I think at this point because we're getting such an early start to the season at this point it's like there's nothing else I can do you just have to let nature take its course and you know what if the vegetables fail 
or if some of this stuff ends up failing, it's not the end of the world because I've got other things that are real easy to grow and real easy to maintain that it's going to give me enough food for the summer. Um, one thing we mentioned in the other video about snap peas is that I, I really like snap peas. And I really recommend you guys grow things that you don't really necessarily have to one, put a lot of attention to, but also they're really tasty and you don't really have to prepare them. That's the greatest part about about this stuff. Now, I think if this one here is saying that I can space this one four inches apart, I could probably get away with multiple plants in the same hole. So if, when I thin this out, I'll probably keep two plants per hole or per cell. And that way I won't have to space them so closely. I could just put multiples in the same hole. And we do the same thing with fruit trees, guys. You put multiple apple trees, stone fruits, pears. I'm even doing multiple figs in the same hole. You know, you can do pretty much anything you guys want. There's no rules to this stuff. And I think that's the greatest part about having an orchard, having a garden, doing anything with food or anything, growing anything is that there's a million ways to do the same thing. Because one guy said, you should do it this particular way. You know, it's like, why not try something else? Um, this is Mizuna. And Mizuna is like, without a doubt, I think the easiest, one of the easiest things to grow here in this climate. One of the annuals, I should say. One of the, the easiest annuals. And the reason it's so easy is because it's kind of like a mustard. I think it's related to mustard rather than, oh, it is a brassica here. So maybe it's not a mustard, but it has that mustard flavor. And what's interesting about it, it's just really good. Um, you can eat it fresh. I think it goes incredibly well in a salad. We're gonna try to up our salad game this year from our own lettuce. Um, maybe you guys have seen the video, but we did a video on creating my own salad that ended up coming out really, really good, really tasty. So you can obviously see the value in, in a good salad and there's a million different types of lettuces that you guys can grow or even mustard greens. Maybe greens, I should just call them all greens. But uh, you can really get creative and have all kinds of really interesting salad mixes for your own salad. And I think that's the beauty of it. Um, Mizuna, I think we can get away with spacing it a bit closer if we're going to pick the leaves more frequently. Um, I think maybe all of this we can get away with spacing it closer than I am here. But you need to be on top of the picking, right? You guys need to be on top of what it is that you're going to grow because if you just let it do its thing, it's going to get much bigger than you probably imagined. So anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Um, that was really seeding all this stuff again we're going to come in here with the plastic wrap put that over top and we're done we're this is all going to germinate in the closet we'll bring it out out of the closet put it three weeks in the sunroom have that pretty much grow there uh for about three weeks and then hopefully it's pretty well adjusted to the sunlight we'll stick it outside in our beds um, on a nice day, hopefully the ground has thawed at that point. It should have thawed at that point. And we can plant right into that. Um, put the row cover over top, and that's really the, the plan. For some of this stuff, I may want to even wait until April 1st. I think March 15th is really a bit of a, a stretch this year. It's a bit of an experiment, I should say. But we're gonna try April, we're gonna try March 15th for a lot of this stuff, putting that into the garden. Because um, the earlier we can get this in, the better. The longer the season has for these particular cool loving crops, you only have so much time to get this stuff in. Once we're done this, we're done direct seeding this, 
um, we take that out of the closet, we're actually gonna start some warm loving crops in these little cells here again, and we're gonna grow all kinds of things in these cells. We're gonna grow flowers. Um, we're gonna grow all kinds of weird stuff like borage, um, chamomile, nasturtiums. Um, we're gonna start our herbs in this kind of cell-like structure here, like oregano and basil. Um, we're gonna do all kinds of things. So if you guys are enjoying this kind of video, let me know down in the comments. Um, give this one a thumbs up and subscribe and please follow along with the 250 days of gardening playlist that we've created and we're going to follow up with you guys every step of the way through the season. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this one. I'll catch you all tomorrow. Um, see you later.